This chat is an extremely inflated sense of celebrity of English dub and anime voice actors. Yeah, I know. I think so too. How do you meet people after high school? First of all, college. And secondly, I meet people in public. I go out in public. I go outside. I play basketball in public parks. Multiple different public parks I go to where I play basketball. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, I go outside to the gym. I work out at a gym. It's a private gym, which is in the backyard of a... Uh, person's house but still there's other people also working out at said gym before I went to that gym I would go to other gyms and at those gyms I would meet people because there is always other people outside um after the gym I go to get coffee for example sometimes and then there are other people at the coffee shop where I go outside and see other people who also want to purchase coffee at the coffee shop outside I guess I'm trying to say, go outside. You will meet humans outside in the real world. It's a fucking mind-boggling concept. <laughs> Pog, sounds very immersive and open world. Making actual friends can actually be hard as fuck as an adult and everyone blasting this is just as socially awkward. I think making friends as an adult is difficult. I'm very lucky that I work in an industry that basically requires you to socialize. So for that reason, but I'm also a very social person. You know what I mean? So like for that very same reason, I, I socialize regardless, but that's, what I do I do I do that like there's always going to be like networking events and stuff like that for whatever particular industry you're in no matter how bumfuck and rural of a part of the country you live in please do not fucking tell me that like there isn't literally like a like a plumbers association networking gala or some shit there is you just don't know about it there always is no matter how fucking silly or stupid or regular average joe ass your job is there is always going to be some kind of fucking, uh, you know, industry-wide, industry-specific thing that you can attend that your company will usually send you to. Um, okay, I am not a plumber, Hassan, says dyslexic femcell. That's just one specific industry that most people would assume doesn't have any kind of networking opportunities of the like that I am pointing to. That's it. At the pussy and grass touching convention and nobody knew you. <laughs> No, it's difficult when you work and stuff. I work in boring medical finance. No. First of all, yes, you're wrong. There definitely is some kind of like job uh, related thing that that uh, makes you socialize. Every industry has it. Like, literally every industry has it. Not sure if I really want to network and connect with other warehouse supervisors, if I'm being honest. No, it, it doesn't matter. What do you mean? Like, dude, you never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. That's not true. What are you, what are you talking about? Dude, you think I'm like, think I'm picking and choosing who the cool people are when I'm fucking meeting people? No, that's not how that works. What the fuck? I just told you. You asked me, how do you meet people in the real world? How do you meet adults in the real world? 
I go to fucking public parks to play basketball. You think I'm like, oh, I wonder what your job is, sir. Like, half the motherfuckers work at Trader Joe's and, and Best Buy. It's not like I'm like, oh, man. You know, I hope Earl Sweatshirt is at this park. Sometimes it's Earl Sweatshirt. Most of the time, it's just regular old dudes that are going to college or some shit like that. You don't pick and choose. You just are a social person, and you meet them, and you hang out with them, and and you, you create, bro, you literally say you go to a private gym. Oh, my God, I'm going to fucking die. I said, that's one of the many instances where I am outside. That's not the only place that I go to when I'm outside. Holy fuck. You're arguing with Twitch watchers. None of us actually want to go out and meet people. We just want to be sad. We don't have friends. Yeah, I, I know. I'm just saying that, like, if you do actually care about it. If you do actually, uh, you know, legitimately care about it, if you want to, like, improve your social skills or meet people, I promise you, just, like, go outside. <laughs> Try to go to an HVAC industry thing to meet new friends, but we just stormed some building, beat up some cops, and one guy thought was I thought was cool got arrested for shitting on Nancy Pelosi's desk. Sag. <laughs> uh, okay, let's get back to fucking woke marketing. Jesus As Christ! Of shoot, he bought one of those like three days ago, right? You can still wear them. You can just not buy more. He can't even shut the fucking thing properly. And the national anthem's fucking blurry. <laughs> Fuck! It's so good! I forgot how good it is! I love this video. So if these angry losers almost accidentally stabbing themselves or giving themselves third degree burns in protest against their functioning property were trying to disincentivize support for progressive ideas, they accidentally did the opposite. Instead, they guaranteed it would happen again. Asana, are you just not going to elaborate on the Earl situation? Yes. I absolutely fucking eviscerated Earl Sweatshirt in a 3v3 basketball game. Like, it was unimaginably, I mean, destroyed. Just destroyed. Me and my two trainers versus my other friend Dom and, and Earl and a, a random dude. Straight up. Did he recognize you? No, he had no fucking idea who the fuck I was. Why would he know who I am? You had two trainers, bro. No way that's fair. He's like half your height. No, I didn't. I didn't. No, I wasn't. No, the other. See, this is a great example. The other guy who was on the team, on his team, was a security guy. He was just a random guy who does security at uh, one of these. I forget. I think it's like a music venue, right? Perfect example. He was the guy who I was guarding. He was pretty big. He was like a, a former football player, I think, like for high school or whatever. That's my favorite rapper, and he definitely balled you up. He did not. He follows GDF on Insta, though. Good. I think he has great politics. I think he's uh, homies with Zach Fox, too. And they do some, like... Chat is so sheltered. They think just seeing a famous person in LA is a flex. Bro, I'm the famous person people see in LA. <laughs> Chat literally doesn't understand this part of the story. Is that half the time, I'm the guy that they're like, oh my god, I can't believe I fucking met uh, Hassan in the real world. Anyway, regardless. I need you to have lost Hassan. That's how much I like Earl. Sorry, I destroyed him. Anyway. Oops. <laughs> Which brings us to Gillette. Although given my luck, it's pronounced 
Gilletti. On the 13th of January, Gillette released a commercial entitled We Believe the Best Men Can Be. Sorry, not a commercial, a short film. It's about how sexism is bad and you shouldn't follow women around in the street when they're minding their own business. Dude, and don't oh let my your kid God. hit other kids. Dude, this was awesome. Conservatives love crying about the dumbest shit, bro. They love crying about the dumbest shit. They cried about this. Remember when they were fucking mad about this? Oh, yeah, yeah. They cry all the time. And then they say the left is constantly the snowflakes. It's like, bro, you saw a commercial and it shook you to your very core. You are not a serious person. You are not a man. Okay? Be a man! Kids, you know, like basic stuff. It's a piece that encourages men to improve themselves in the really hard way, where you question your ingrained behaviors and think about how to... Yeah, I had to debate this subject so many fucking times on the Austin show, formerly known by another name. This fucking ad. Oh my God, I'm getting like PTSD flashbacks, dude. Encourage better ones. It's not the sort of self-improvement advice men tend to get, frankly. It's quite hard to pass this sort of thing at first when you've spent your life being told the solution is to clean your room, go to the gym, and convince yourself that being shitty to people is actually charisma and proves you have more of a personality than them. The response was... predict. This shit was so old, I remember crying about it before I came here. Oh, I love that. I love that, like, this is such an old school... I mean, this is a four-year fucking old video. A lot can change in four years. There's like chatters who fucking probably thought this was like gay. I can't believe Gillette's trying to make you gay. Oh yeah, there was this fucking little thing too. It's almost as if they intended for it and that was the point and they wanted it to happen. Stable, clever boys and a few girls from all over the internet emerged to provide an example of their version of masculinity in action by screaming and crying that a commercial said sexism was bad. The commercial itself, anything it said or did, didn't really matter. A commercial gets shown a couple of times and then it goes away. What really mattered was this behavior. It made Gillette the talk of the internet for several full days as all of the rights thought leaders, bit of a misnomer, they don't seem to have had any yet, all emerged to have their own personal two minute hate tweet storm at Gillette, not realizing that they were the actual commercial for Gillette. The Gillette commercial is the product of mainstream radicalized feminism and emblematic of cultural Marxism. It's actually pronounced guillotine. Stop perverting masculinity. Let little boys wrestle. <laughs> I'm sorry, Candace. It's too late. The Marxists are going door to door and preventing boys from wrestling. Now I could just laugh at these rubbish tweets for another 20 minutes, but instead we're gonna cut right to the funniest one of them all. An account named War Room tweeted, goodbye Gillette, hello Schick. Oh sweet, another gentleman ready to free his skin. This tweet was connected to a picture he'd taken of his Gillette razor floating in a toilet. It was shared pretty widely, so apparently huh. this counts as a form of protest now, but I can't help but Imagine the few seconds that happened after this picture was taken. <laughs> this will show him. <laughs> oh, I have to get the razor out of the toilet now. I have to reach into the toilet with my hands and take it out. I should have thought a bit harder about this, shouldn't I? I can't stop marveling at the majesty of it. Speaking briefly as a man, whose body is in like the top 90 percentiles of testosterone. I've checked. That's why I'm gonna be bold by I'm 28. Look forward to that, future subscribers. I really don't get it. I don't make a habit of questioning other people's masculinity because I think the concept is super murky and basically made up and nothing's to be gained from that. But I do think there is a statement here about the status of modern Western men in the fact that millions of them seemingly dropped fucking everything to be mad at a commercial. Like, what the fuck? Aren't we supposed to be hunting the mammoth? <laughs> like... Branding your company based on controversial opinions is rarely a good idea, though. Dude, what are you talking about? Like, it's not a controversial opinion. You think they don't fucking literally mathematically figure out that as a brand, the opinion that they're bringing about is literally not controversial? It's controversial to who? That's the question you need to fucking ask, okay? None of the things that Gillette is saying is controversial. Saying, oh yeah, Dylan Mulvaney is a trans woman, and like, that's great. 
We think trans women are women and they should drink beers. Our beer specifically is not controversial to the average person. The average person doesn't see that. The average person doesn't hear that. The average person, unless they're like politically fucking brain broken, doesn't think that that is like, oh my God. That's not like how this works for the most part. Okay. That's not how this works for the most part. It's not supposed to be controversial to anybody. The point is, it becomes controversial to the right-wingers because they find this to be, like, unacceptable, okay? They lose their fucking minds, and then everyone else goes, oh, you know what? Oh, dude, this is my favorite type. This is my favorite fucking idiot. Hassan, you kind of forget that half the country votes Republican. No, they don't! No, they don't! No, they don't! Half the country does not vote Republican. That's not a real thing. Half of this country is not Republican. Half of this country isn't Democrat either. You're wrong, okay? You're just objectively wrong. Even out of the voter eligible population, even through that metric, half the fucking country is not voting Republican. They're not voting for either party. If anything, the most successful political party is the non-voting political party, okay? So you're wrong. Not only that, but also on top of that, Republicans doesn't necessarily mean that they're also like, super gung-ho on all the other shit that the Republican media tells you they're supposed to be gung-ho on. That is actually at the heart of the problem that the Republican Party is facing right now in this particular moment. Culture war, wedge issues that they have been fighting on, they have unfortunately become too successful for their own good on, are really biting them in the ass now. Republicans don't win because they win votes. Republicans don't win because they're popular. Republicans win because... They cheat. They use gerrymandered districts. They fucking sidestep the legislative body. They court pack. They court pack all the way up to the fucking Supreme Court. They suppress voters. That's how they fucking win. And then they have the Electoral College and they have the Senate. That's it. That's the only reason why Republicans win anything. That doesn't mean they're popular. That doesn't mean their ideas are popular. And even then, amongst the Republican voters, that doesn't necessarily mean that there, are Repub- there aren't Republican voters out there that don't even have, like, trans children, for example, or don't even have fucking uh, 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 a gay child who's friends with a queer child or a trans child in their fucking school district, okay? That's what a lot of people keep forgetting. And most importantly, they're just, you know, they don't give a shit. They don't care. They just want to make sure that their housing values are up. They want to make sure that there aren't any poor people or black people in their fucking neighborhoods. Some of them. And that's pretty much it. And they want low taxes. But even then, they're still going to drink Bud Light. Even then, they're still going to use Gillette. Okay? A Republican hasn't won the popular vote in over 20 years, 20 fucking years. That's why they do not want Gen Z voting at 18. They're trying to kill y'all. Well, that's, you know, um, Bush second time uh, did. Almost 20. But It's a money cycle. It's easy content package for them. Win-win company, right-win content, mill both. The point is, none of this shit is even all that controversial, and it makes the most annoying motherfuckers chirp. That's it. Saying that, you know, men should be less toxically masculine is not a controversial statement. No matter how much, like, men should you know, call out other men when they're engaging in, like, shitty behavior is not really all that controversial of a statement. You are just an animal. You're, like, a lizard brain animal, and, like, other lizard brain animals have gotten mad at it, so you, through pack mentality, go, wait, there's controversy there. Some people respond to that and go, wow, this is surely controversial. Oh, it's so bad. I hate it. I'm going to stop using Gillette. Other people go, that's funny. That's you're dumb. You're stupid. I'm going to buy Gillette now because it made you my enemy angry. Huh. 
All these corporations have a team of 500 businessmen come up with a scientifically calculated level of non-controversial controversy to spar anger among conservative idiots and admiration among lib idiots. Exactly. This entire video is basically that. That's it. That's the whole video. It's non-controversial controversies that piss off the fucking most annoying hogs that you know. Do you know the pedo hunters? The people who are like, every gay person is a pedophile. Like those guys... The sweaty, gross, weirdo, schizo fucking pieces of shit that go to the parent-teachers conference, even though they technically, in a just world, would not be allowed within a mile radius of a fucking school, those guys are getting mad. Okay? Those guys get really mad. Most other people, even in the conservative circle, look at those guys and go, that's weird and gross. Stop. I just want deregulation and tax cuts for my... Uh, for my real estate business. You know what I mean? Okay, I don't want... What do you, Why are you talking about the genitalia of teenagers like literally in my vicinity? I don't want that. Okay? I just don't want black people in my neighborhood. I don't want any of the other shit. Okay, calm down. Or... It's mostly other people on the other side who are like, no, you're fucking crazy. And I like that the brand is saying that you shouldn't be toxically masculine. Okay? That's it. Clip and ship. Yes, I'm portraying myself as a suburban racist voter. Of course, that's the fucking point I'm making. That's what suburban, that's what these suburban racist voters are voting on. Hello, welcome to the fucking universe that we live in. Screaming at Gillette doesn't feed the tribe, you fucking low T beta. I can say that, by the way, because I have more and I'm going bald. I have to wear it so I get to make the joke. Fuck you. Anyway, Gillette, Keurig and Nike all successfully boosted their products and their image by way of relying on backlash from weirdos. And it worked. They probably all made quite a lot of sales, which reminds me. My box of stuff from all of my favorite progressive sounding companies arrived. Ooh, I wonder what's in it. What's this? That's weird. I'm not sure what this is. What could it possibly be? Oh, it's child labor. <laughs> oh yeah, here it comes, baby. <laughs> the generic 10 minute rant about how capitalism is bad that I do at the end of every video now. That's right, I made yet another video to turn out to secretly be all about capitalism. You thought I couldn't do it, but I did! Don't ever question me again! You don't need me to lecture you through Nike's history of sweatshop labor, or their ongoing allegations of poor work conditions, often pulling production from factories that threaten to unionize, and refusing to let the Workers' Rights Consortium inspect their factories. You don't need me to go into exacting detail about Gillette's owners, Procter & Gamble, a giant corporation who are implicated in all kinds of stuff, or the general way big businesses are unethical on so many levels. I'm not even going to get into the pink tax, the way companies like Gillette can often say vaguely progressive things, but will happily charge women more for effectively the same pro- You live in a white neighborhood? What are you talking about? That's sick, man. Thank you. Um, what I should do instead is go live in East Los Angeles. You're right. This is such a good fucking take. Listen, the difference is, I don't give a shit who my fucking neighbors are, dumbass. And I'm not trying to change actively housing policy. Okay, the difference is the homeowners association dipshits who fucking turn around and literally actively try to make sure that no neighborhood character is eviscerated. Also, you don't know anything about the fucking neighborhood I'm in. I love that this dumbass fucking argument from right wingers is always like, oh man, Hassan, he's like, you know, he's, he's living in the whitest area he could. No, maybe you think I'm living in the whitest area I could, but that's not the reality. Okay? It is a very rich neighborhood still. Okay? It's a rich neighborhood. But there's mixed income housing in this neighborhood. I don't have an issue with that. I want more of that. That's my point. I don't live in the fucking ivory tower that you think I live in, even though I don't want to actually, uh, you know, rock the boat. Yes, I live in a gated community. Do not come here. It's definitely gated. I live in the Hasanabi Hills. East LA is very gay. You live in a gay neighborhood? No, I live in West I live in West Hollywood. 
Also, notice how Hassan magically becomes white when it suits the bigots. I know. The very same people who fucking constantly say, you're not white, dog. You're not white, though. You can't say cracker. You're not white. You're not white. All of a sudden, are like, you're white, and you want to live in a white neighborhood. You're racist. What happened? I thought I wasn't white. What happened? I am, by the way. I always love the owns of you're rich, so you're not allowed to speak on socioeconomical conditions, uh, socioeconomic issues. Yeah, I know. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. Holy fuck. Guys, I live in, I live in a city. There's a lot of crime happening in this city, so don't come here, please, so much. It's so scary. There are black and brown people everywhere. What's West Hollywood like? Mostly mansions or a mix? Depending on where you are, but it's mostly mix. It's not mansions at all, as a matter of fact. It's usually apartments because West Hollywood is the poor man's, even though it's very still incredibly fucking expensive, but it's the poor man's Beverly Hills. That's it. And then there's different varying degrees of Beverly Hills. There's the place that they call Flats, which is on Flatland, closer to Rodeo Drive, but still has mixed income housing. Or not mixed income housing, but mixed zoning, basically. And then you have the hill side of the Beverly Hills, which is where all the fucking mega mansions are. None of this matters. They're all still incredibly fucking expensive in comparison to our Kansas because the LA housing market is fucking disgusting. The reason why it's disgusting is because of the fucking dipshits that I was just mentioning that are like, I don't want to upset the neighborhood character. No host sucks to drive in. Was on La Cienega earlier today and the street is awful, Lamal. Don't even get me started on La Cienega. That's literally where I blew up the tire to my Porsche. I think you confuse East LA with the East Side. No, East Los Angeles for the most part, is where there is uh, more affordable housing, even though it is being rapidly gentrified. That is, what, that is literally where uh, most of the affordable housing is. What the fuck are you talking about? It is historically... It is historically uh, predominantly Hispanic or sometimes, depending on where, uh, depending on where you are, Asian communities the problem is there's not really anything there's not There isn't really any area that is like close to, that that's in basically the the greater Los Angeles uh, 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 area that that you could say is like affordable. It's just not. It's really fucked up. You get mistaken for Latino a lot? No, I've never been mis. Dog, I'm six four. Nothing. I didn't. <laughs> I love that it's, uh, there are tall teams. I know, man. It's a fucking joke. Shut up. Jesus Christ. Cancellation number one, two, three. Run it up. I. Puerto Rican vegan socialist. Fuck you. <laughs> Casually racist. Uh, 
Hassan doing racial essentialism kind of cringe. Oh God, I fucking I just sometimes when I say stuff like this, like I really when I when I read stuff like this, I just want to be like, I wish I was a right winger. I really do. Like it's just like the most. Yes, dude, I'm doing race essentialism. I actually just read the bell curve too, and I agree with everything in it. And uh, honestly, that's it. Everything I believe in, in my, in my life, I just you know, God, it would be so easy. It'd be so easy to be right wing. True, and Latinos don't generally have astronomically tiny heads. Wow, that's hurtful. Words are violence, you, you asshole. So, the real reason why I made that joke is because there is a six foot and under league at one of the parks I play at, and they never let me play, okay? So, who's, who's being the real racist now? Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. It's called discrimination, and it's really fucked up. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's either I don't understand this chat or the chat does not understand you at all. Fake story. Maybe you are. El Topo Loco seems like you want to be. Fake story. Yeah, I made up the fake story of the six foot and under league. Yeah, you, that definitely never happens. Famously. Product if they think they can get away with it. And don't even get me started on Keurig. Their coffee. Okay, I didn't say that they were all Latino. You made that inference. Okay, you made that. Isn't very nice. And also a bunch of labor violations. You know most of this stuff happens already, and we all know it's bad. I'm not saying you should personally feel bad for buying the products of these companies either. Almost every company has something in their production chain which, if you sat and looked at it, you'd probably find unethical. That's the world we live in, and we don't change it by feeling bad about our tacit participation, we change it by trying to find ways of altering the way things are. The point here is that businesses exist to make money. Sometimes that's in the form of moving jobs to a country that does it cheaper, often because they don't have to treat their workers as well. Sometimes it's in the form of fiddling their taxes so much that not only did they pay less taxes than you, you technically paid them. Sometimes it's in the form of charging women more for pink razors, and sometimes it's in finding new ways to make you think about buying their product. These clips sound nice, inspirational even. They say things that not only do I agree with, but which I think are normal and not in the slightest bit radical. But they're commercials. Their purpose is to sell you things. What the fuck? They're a what? marketing strategy with little to no impact on the actual problems that threaten our world. I mean, heck, they won't even admit their commercials are commercials anymore. They're short films. It's got a cinematic aspect ratio, so you know it's classy and not an ad. There's this sequence where they play an old Gillette ad and symbolically break through it as if to surpass it. But this is all window dressing designed to disguise that you are being sold something. It's really insidious to me how completely companies are trying to mask the fact that that's what they're doing. They're still just trying to find a way to get you. And it turns out that people don't go for hiring a model to pretend to eat a sandy pineapple burger anymore. They go for something that sounds really progressive and forward thinking, and that all the weirdos on Twitter seem to be mad about. It's just like dear old dad always used to tell me, son, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. Actually, that's a lie. That's my fantasy. Dad mostly just sat in the corner and read Victor Klemperer books. But I'm the Victor Klemperer of my age, father! I tell everyone which video games are bad! Brands are not our friends. But it is nice, isn't it? I mean, I can make fun of people for buying razors just to spite some weirdos online or for liking a commercial or whatever, but... It is pretty cool that a company actually invited discussion of these issues. Just keep in mind that there are deeper problems with these companies that we do need to talk about and solve, and don't let them buy your allegiance by saying something vaguely progressive sounding in a commercial. Besides, there are better, less invasive, more genuine ways of getting your product out there to people. Which brings me to Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is a subscription. All right, uh, let's talk about 
let's talk about unions. Okay, we're going to move away from this. I think this was a good opportunity to to cover. Let's talk about let's talk about unions, baby. Day two, Rutgers, DKE, Delta Kappa Epsilon remains stoked about the strike and has hung our union sign on the frat entrance. Even Rutgers frat himbos are progressive now. The GOP has really lost a generation. Were you DKE? No, I was not. Now, I don't even know if my fraternity exists still at Rutgers. I think they like kind of rip through. All of the fraternities at Rutgers, just as they did in every other school that doesn't have like a super long legacy of fraternities. And by that, I mean like straight up clan uh, involvement, like in the South. But um, yes, the, G- the, 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 the uh, frat bros are rising up. Now, where is the, uh, where is the story? Let's get to it. Uh, academics, not DJ academics, but academics are rising up this time at Rutgers University. But of course, remember, they are technically supposed to be uh, not working class. They are technically supposed to be because, you know, the, the faculty members are, are woke and gay and and the faculty and staff striking is actually woke and gay. Therefore, not working class. The working class is not woke and gay. Anyway, Rutgers University faculty members are striking, halting classes and research. The walkout is the first in the public university's 257-year history and follows nearly a year of bargaining. That's right. For those of you who don't know, Rutgers University literally is older than the nation. Fun fact, uh, Rutgers University was once uh, brought into the Ivies, which they declined because they wanted to maintain their public status. Anyway, uh, three unions representing an estimated 9,000 full and part-time faculty members at Rutgers University went on strike on Monday for the first time at the school's 257-year history, bringing classes and research at New Jersey's flagship public university to a halt. This strike, which will affect... Uh, which will affect roughly 67,000 students across the state comes after nearly a year of unsuccessful bargaining between union representatives and the university officials. The union said on Sunday that the two sides remain far apart on several issues, including a pay increase and the rights of untenured adjunct faculty members and graduate workers. If you know anything about uh, adjunct faculty members and graduate students who are working at the university, you would know that they work for literally nothing, okay? It is, a, it is basically, they're slaves. They are like the NCAA athlete version of academia. Uh, they do all the research, they teach the classes, and they get paid for literally nothing. Sometimes they don't even get housing. Hopefully, sometimes they get housing, and that's pretty much it, or they get paid pennies on the dollar. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, see, there you go. Grass News get paid like 20K a year here in UW in Seattle in an insanely high-cost living city. It's disgusting. It is fucking ridiculous. We intend for this new contract to be transformative, especially for our lowest paid and most vulnerable members. Rebecca Givon, the president of one of the unions, Rutgers AAUPAFT, which represents full-time faculty members and graduate workers, postdoctoral associates, and counselors, said in a statement. Ms. Givon said union proposals that included a significant raise in the promise of job security for adjunct professors were exactly the ones that the administration has resisted the most. As workers form picket lines at Rutgers' three main campuses in New Brunswick, Newark, and Camden, the representatives from the university and the unions met in Trenton, the state capital, where Governor Phil Murphy had invited them to negotiate. This is actually big for Governor Phil Murphy, who has, I think, um, presented himself as a relatively progressive governor. And New Jersey is more progressive than you would think it is. Uh, or you, most people, understandably, never really talk about New Jersey because, you know, why would you? But, you know, it's a, it's a unique place. It's a unique place that has, you know, it's just, I don't want to say too many nice things about New Jersey, Okay. 
I the that's it. That's the most. Just it's painful. It's painful and hard for me to to say nice things about New Jersey because it sucks. But they do some good things. Okay, they do some good things. Uh, that's it. Okay, that's the most I'm going to say. Miskiff is from New Jersey. That's all you need to know about the state. Okay, we feel hopeful about <laughs> we feel hopeful about bargaining productively, and we appreciate the governor's support. Ms. Gavon said in an interview, we are committed to getting it done and necessary, and if necessary, we are definitely prepared to stay here until we get it done. Dory Devlin, a spokesman for the university, expressed similar optimism. She said Rutgers appreciated the governor's leadership and that they were hopeful that we can quickly come to a resolution of the remaining outstanding issues. The university said on Sunday that it did not expect the strike to interfere with academics. The spring semester ends early next month. Notwithstanding the action by union leadership, the university is committed to ensuring that our more than 67,000 students are unaffected by the strike and may continue their academic progress, the school said in a statement. Our students' ability to complete their coursework and earn their degrees is the university's highest priority, it added. Every effort will be made to ensure that the strike does not affect our students' progress towards graduation. More than 100 faculty members and students gathered to picket on a street corner outside the university's main campus in New Brunswick on Monday. Michelle Ling, 24, a graduate student in women, gender and sexuality studies, spoke in defense of the graduate workers and adjunct f- uh, faculty who said, who she said both hold this university up. Ms. Ling, who earns $30,000 per year teaching at Rutgers on a nine-month contract, said many graduate students who work for the school are forced to juggle multiple jobs or go on public assistance to make ends meet. A lot of the grads that I know here are on food stamps, said Ms. Ling. A lot of grads I know have secret part-time jobs. They don't report to the university because they have to. They have families. They have responsibilities. Yeah. Abelia Hernandez, 48, a professor at the Graduate School of Education, said because she has tenure, she had the luxury of being out here without the fear of retaliation. There are different levels of respect and status at the university, and adjunct professors are not getting the status that they deserve, she said. Now... The other side of this, and I talk about this all the time. This is uh, something that I know I have a personal experience with through family members and whatnot. A big part of the reason why PhDs love fucking yelling at you if you don't call them a doctor about being called a doctor is because they have nothing else. The entire world of academia is riddled with nepotism. It's riddled with, like, uh, you know, status and egos and narcissistic, self-entitled liberals who love smelling the uh, sense of their own farts, okay? And the only thing they have at the tippy top are uh, the fact that they have a PhD and they can sit through your dissertation and shit on you, okay? So... For that reason, all of the up-and-coming graduate students have to literally sit there and eat all of that shit that is being shoveled down their fucking throats. So when they inevitably get to a point where they finally get their degree, that's all they have. They don't get paid for it. They don't even get paid after it. So all they got is the research that they made, the research that they, that they participated in, and their fucking title. That is why... They get mad when people, you know, don't call them doctor when they have a PhD. So that's it. They literally spend countless hours on research. It's their lives work. And then they don't have $5 to avoid the top of the hour ad break. Then that research gets sold. That research is published in academic journals, and then the academic journals make money, and the college campus makes money, but they don't see a dime of that too. So there's also that reality. Now you're just sitting with a fuckload more debt, and, and you know, you, your shit, if you're lucky enough, got published, and someone else is making money off of it. 
So yeah, it's very fucked up. There are uh, different levels of respect and status at the university and adjunct professors are not getting the status they deserve. There are less tenure track positions. They are taking more and more of the teaching work and they need to be compensated for that. Fanboy Edge Prop, thank you for the 10 gifted subs, allowing 10 people to no longer see the top of the hour. Ad break, especially 10 uh, PhDs, I hope, 10 graduate students or adjunct professors that don't have $5 to avoid the top of the hour ad break. Here's the three-minute ad break now. The strike was called after 94% of union members voted in favor of it earlier this year, union officials said. But the university has said that it expects all union members to continue working and that it believes a strike by public sector workers is illegal in New Jersey. <laughs> nice. The university may go to court to maintain university operations and protect our students, patients, and staff from disruptions to their education, clinical care, and workplace. The school said in a statement, the university may seek an injunction in court to compel a return to normal activities. What are you going to do? Fucking, you know, force them at gunpoint? Oh my God, they're going to force them at gunpoint. I hate this. Nine, three, four out of ten. God damn. Everybody said ten, ten. Deserved it. You're right. <laughs> the massacre at Rutgers Hill. The unions argue that there's no law barring their strike. They call the university's position delusional or mendacious. You know, bro, this is how you know. This is an academic. This is, this is a union filled with academics. Look at this. Mendacious? Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> she said mendacious, dude. I don't even know what that means, okay? The strike quickly gained national attention with state and federal lawmakers expressing their support. Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont said on Twitter, These workers deserve a good contract with fair pay and benefits now. Representative Frank Pallone Jr., Democrat who represents the congressional district that includes Rutgers, said at a rally of roughly 300 people on a campus quad on Monday that graduate students and adjunct faculty members cannot be left behind. The administration calls me all the time to try to get more grants and funding for more research, he said. But I always say, if that's going to be the case, we need to make sure that the graduate students who are doing the research, teaching the classes, they have a fair wage too. Ethan Block, a junior at Rutgers who was majoring in political science, said he did not go to class on Monday as an act of solidarity with the striking faculty members. His course is taught by a guest lecturer who is not in the union. <laughs> okay, bro, we know why you didn't go to class, okay? You don't have to fucking act like you did it with, uh, out of solidarity. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason. Okay. I feel like the faculty unions have been treated unfairly, frankly, by the administration, said Mr. Block. He said he did not plan to attend class on Tuesday either. Okay. We as a student body have a sort of duty to support the faculty members that are going on strike, he said. If they get what they want, then my education will be better, and the educations of every student at Rutgers will be better. That's right. That's true. What kind of bozo majors in poli sci at Rutgers? I agree. Who the fuck would do that? Lame. <laughs> Fucking so, so dumb, dude. Big L. <laughs> uh, okay, let's move on. Anyway, solidarity with the striking workers. Hopefully that it, they, they get what they deserve, which is fair, equitable, better wages. Um, Poli side degree is a coloring book degree, and you know this. Yeah, I love this. Honestly. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. Should other workers, i.e. overworked bus drivers, custodians, dining hall workers get in on this? Um, certainly. I don't know what the, uh, I don't actually know what the, uh, the, the, the staff, uh, unionization looks like. 
Brats being woke now is really going to piss my uncle off. Unions are not woke. They do not have to be woke. Anyway, here is the Rutgers AAUPAFT, American Association of University Professors and American Federation of Teachers, the part of the AFL-CIO, strike fund. I'm a freshie here. I asked a dining hall worker the other day. They are a different union contract, and the buses are a contracted non-union company. Here is the strike fund, solidarity fund. There you go. Um. Okay. What's this, huh? I don't know what that is. What are you showing? What the fuck is this? I don't know what that is. Shut up. Why are you showing that? Dick. Fake news, dude. I didn't even read it. I don't know how to read. Shut the fuck up. I didn't go to college, so... Oh, um, let's look well, at not- a funny story now that we talked about their unions. Uh, funny story time. <laughs> Urgent search for leaker of U.S. secret documents continues. Uh, we covered this already a couple days back. We covered this, uh, you know, we, we, we covered the story uh, a couple days back and it turns out it was true. They literally did leak it in a fucking random, uh, discord server, which then ended up, uh, getting leaked at a, uh, wow mouse, a discord server. Uh, it's fucking, it's not Hoscord. Shut the fuck up. On the leak of classified documents from the Pentagon. The White House admits it has no idea how much secret material was taken and if we could be seeing more of it online. Senior National Correspondent Terry Moran is at the White House. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, George. That's it. This is an unfolding nightmare for U.S. intelligence. And as you say, the truly alarming thing is the White House not only doesn't know who the leaker is, they don't know how much more might be out there. Oh, yeah. This morning, the Biden administration is in damage control mode over that stunning leak of classified U.S. military and intelligence documents. And now officials are scrambling to understand just how bad these leaks are. The truth and the honest answer to your question is we don't know. And is that a matter of concern to us? You're darn right it is. The White House admits they don't know how many documents are out there or even whether more could be leaked, including on social media platforms like Twitter and Telegram. The Justice Department has launched a criminal investigation while the Pentagon assesses and tries to mitigate the damage. Should the American people think that that the administration is losing the battle against whoever wants to steal our secrets, whether it's foreign adversaries or hackers. I think the American people need to know and deserve to know that we're taking this very, very seriously. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Um, and then if there's actions that need to be taken, uh, as we learn more about the extent of what happened here, we'll obviously take those. The documents would have been available to hundreds, possibly thousands of U.S. military and civilian officials based in the U.S. and overseas. Some of these leaked documents were created as recently as March 1st, making the information even more timely and valuable. Among the most potentially damaging leaks, U.S. intelligence about the war in Ukraine, including details about weaknesses in Ukraine's air defenses and about its unit's readiness ahead of a potential spring offensive. But the intelligence touches nearly every corner of the globe, Iran and North Korea's long-range missile programs, Russia's intelligence operations in Africa, and South Korea's concerns about arming Ukraine. Those leaks about allied countries are causing a diplomatic fallout. U.S. officials have been in touch with uh, relevant allies and partners over the last couple of days at very high levels. 
and those administration officials are reaching out to allies. They're doing damage control assessment. They're trying to figure out how to maintain close military and intelligence ties when they can't say when. It blows my fucking mind that this is like a real thing that happens regularly. I don't know. I don't understand. Like, I cannot in good conscience believe that this was leaked on accident. When or even if these leaks are going to stop anytime soon. Michael? All right. Thank you so much for that, Terry. Hi. I mean, they, I mean, but they, they are saying that they want to fucking figure out who leaked it. So maybe it is real. Tim, I would like you to, to debate me on the Wokeness of Super Mario Bros. movie. It is not woke. It may be the least woke movie of all time, anytime, anywhere. Okay, let's see. Private NATO documents were leaked on my Discord. Hey guys, Filipino YouTube celebrity here. Guess who just got an article on Forbes? Me. But not for the best reasons. If you don't know what's going on right now, let me give you a quick rundown. Bro, why? What the fuck? Wait, why? Why does it sound like he's, he's recording from a prison, dude? On the 